Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it either sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading reaffirms a reality that I think needs to be pointed out in this day and age. The Lord is here to save all, not just the Jews, not, those, not just those recently converted Christians of the day, but all. Now we remember not too long ago, we read a little scripture reading where Jesus was in the, in the um, well, sitting down, and the Samaritan woman went and he asked her for water. Her response was logical for the time. You, a Jew, asking me for water, and I'm a Samaritan, we don't get along. Basically, what's up with that? But Jesus preached to her. Jesus showed her that he loved her. Jesus talked to her and convinced her that he was the Savior, and she went and brought other Samaritans to the well because she acknowledged that she had just met the prophet. Today, in today's reading, Philip goes to the Samaritans and starts preaching to them. And they believe in God, not only by what he said, but what he did what he said and what he did. And sometimes we have to combine. I always remember my wife when we were dating, and I'm not gonna say how long ago, she had this little doll and in the bottom it said, don't say you love me, just love me. And, 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 and sometimes we have to show, sometimes, sometimes it's not what we say, it's what we are. And as a result of this preaching, the Samaritans accepted the word of God. And not only that, they called Peter and John and Peter and John came and prayed over them because they had a limited baptism. They only had the baptism of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they didn't have the baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the apostles prayed for them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, in our Christian liturgy, we are preparing exactly for that, for the day of the Holy Spirit, the day the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, the day of Pentecost. That is preceded by, for example, next Thursday, we will celebrate the ascension of the Lord. And what did the Lord say? He called the apostles. They came forward. The word says in, in Matthew that they entertained doubts. 
after 40 years of seeing him here and there, they still entertain doubts. But Jesus told them, go to all of the world, not just to the Jewish, not just to the converted Christians, go to all the world and teach them everything that I taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then said, and I will be with you every day until the end of the world. Today, he reaffirms that. Today, it's before that little event, which wasn't that little. Today, he himself is coming and telling the apostles, very soon the world will not see me, but you will always see me. You who believe, you who have heard the word, you who have acted on the word, you who have been converted and continue to grow in conversion, have heard me, you will be with me and I will be with you because I am with the Father and the Father is in me and you will be in me and I will be in you. That's unity, that's love. That's what we're all about. And he starts the gospel by saying, if you follow my commandments, I will love you and you will love me because that is the expression of love in following and living the word of God. Because as we live the word of God, we live the word of love because God is love and who loves lives in God and God lives in him. <clears throat> now, just in case we think it's all going to be beautiful and rose and soft and calm, we're grounded because also in today's preaching we talk about the suffering of Jesus and how Jesus suffered for our sake. And we are warned that if we love, sometimes we are going to suffer. It's not going to be a, a, a day in the park. We are going to suffer. But the word of God also reaffirms that it's better to suffer for doing good than suffer for doing what is not good, for doing evil. And I think anyway, we're going to have a little suffering because we have a world that's a little crazy out there. And my last 20 years in the, my career, I worked in education. And the teachers are a good example of this. Teachers, social workers, people who work with people, people who work for te people. But I'm going to use the example of a teacher, but it's not limited to this. How often does a teacher lose sleep because they're trying to help this knucklehead who has a hard time behaving, paying attention, being interested, and the teacher who loves to teach has this passion of reaching that young person to learn the lesson of the day. And that teacher has, a, I, I, I just remember in the, in the teacher room just talking about how can I help this little knucklehead? And sometimes I, rem I, I go back to my days and think, I wonder if those teachers in my days were talking like that about me. Because <laughs> I was a pretty knucklehead. I mean, I, I, I was pretty hard at school. But the reality is that that is an example of suffering for the good of others. But the reality also is that the Lord tells us that Jesus suffered for all of our good, for our salvation. He suffered the way of the cross, the passion. He suffered, and it wasn't 40 days ago, it's pretty close. We walked those stations with him. We did the stations around here. We came to that Good Friday celebration, either during the day or at night. We walked with him and we saw it's our time to do it's our time to express 
love. But how do we express love? We express love by loving. Yes, we have to talk about love. Yes, we have to talk about the love of God. But more importantly, we have to live the love of God so others can see that happy, rejoiceful face in us that the Lord is with us and that we are in the Lord. The Word takes us to Christ. Christ takes us to the Father. Through the Holy Spirit, we walk that journey and we will rejoice in the Lord every day as long as we live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.